All right, what's up? We are doing a little video update from the cellar, although we're not in the cellar currently. Uh, yesterday we went out and we, well, yesterday, I guess April 6th, 5th, 5th. 5th. That's what day it is, it's the sixth today. <laughs> Uh, April 5th, we went out and finalized all of our blends for our upcoming bottling, which is at the end of this month, April, uh, for our Riesling, Pinot Noir, and the new guy on the block, our red blend, the Rapid Change red blend that we're going to be putting in to the run. And I promised a little video to get into a little bit more detail of blending, but what I wanted to do is have this one, our very own HBIC, specifically talk about the Pinot blending, the different lots that we tasted, and the final blend when it was all said and done. So. Uh, oh, okay. So this was my first time getting involved in the blending <clears throat> process a lot of times, actually most of the time. He has brought everything home and has set up shop in the lab out back and he wanted to include me this time into the blending and it was very interesting. Um, I was not at all expecting what each barrel tasted like. Um, the Riesling, well, I know you want to talk about the Pinot, but yeah. the, we, we did the Riesling, tried all the Riesling barrels too, which was, um, which was super cool because we have some in stainless steel and oak barrels. Correct. So that was kind of fun to see that difference. And then um, the Pinot, um, so the Pinot was 8, 2018, right? That's right, 2018. And I was really surprised at how much it didn't taste like Pinot Noir, <laughs> I guess. Uh, am I allowed to say this? Yeah, no, totally. Okay. I think I think the thing that stuck out to me is probably out there are probably two barrels that you really liked: the mm -hmm. Pete's barrel, the brand new barrel that we're using, mm -hmm. 100 new oak. And there's one other one. I think the kitchen sink where it was all of the yeah, like the last all of one, the like all the yeah, the, all the remainder of the different clones that wouldn't fill a barrel. We blend those all together. Because what we try and do with the Pinot in particular is because we're using up to three different clones or different types of Pinot Noir, um, we're putting them in different oak barrels, whether they're once used, neutral, or brand new. We keep all these clones very, very separate, basically up until right now when we start blending them. So we were trying basically individual clonal selections in different types of oak. Some, you know, there were two or three barrels, you know, that did have, you know, a combination of different clones, but... Your face after each one was probably the funniest thing. He, I guess my face had him questioning whether or not he's actually a good winemaker. Yeah. It had nothing to do with him or the wines. A, it was just jarring. I mean, if anybody has gone barrel sampling, it's just that's not the finished product. So, like, you just have to go in knowing that, right? So, right. it just, um, I haven't tried anything out of the barrel in a long time, especially ours and especially the Pinot. So, you know... The Pinot goes through weird waves of up and down, and um, it just, like, was, I guess, jarring to my palate. But, with that being said, once we got through them, and then we did the final blend, and it was cool to kind of compare, compare and contrast each barrel, differences of, like, the nose and how it actually tasted, and um, putting that all together, we both were like, oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> like, <clears throat> so, it's one of those puzzles where, like, all the individual parts don't work and then you put it together and it makes sense. For sure. It was a true testament to how much of a pain in the ass Pinot Noir can be because it is, you taste all these individual lots and you're like, holy crap, like none of these make any sense. But alone, <laughs> they're very independent of one another. They don't necessarily seem like they're going to jive all that well. Some are a little edgy, some aren't, but it's tough to like see the complete picture. But after what, probably a half an hour of putting that to blend, letting it sit and like come together, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, this is actually this is what we want it to be. Like it's tasting mm -hmm. good when you combine all these kind of what seem like random puzzle pieces together yeah. and clones to make the final thing. But it's also why we age our Pinot for another year. So it'll get bottled at the end of the month and then it'll be in bottle for another year yeah. to let that even come together a little more. Cause even, even outside of our cab, like our cab's not as edgy as the mm -hmm. Pinot is. Yeah. Like the cab is surprisingly more approachable than our Pinot Noir is. So we have, we have to age our Pinot another year to make it like, but I 
know, what did you think of the red blend? Because that's the first time I think I've given you like yeah. the final. Yeah, that was fun be too because blend. I had forgotten what the co-ferment was. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so trying that was um, really cool because we haven't done anything like that before. So, you know, had the Merlot, had the Pinot, had the Riesling, Cab. And then now to like do something completely different um, was really cool. So I'm excited that we're going to have that yeah, in the lineup. For sure. I mean, it was, that's been like my, where I've been racking my brain over the last two years, year and a half, is this red blend because we did a co-ferment of about 40% Cabernet from Mount Veeder, 60% Merlot from St. Helena. And that's been in this brand new barrel, uh, just like, okay, how are we going to, what are we going to do with this thing? Where is this going to end up? And we came up with this red blend and we've tried the thing that we tried to try yesterday was do we add just more merlot to it does it need it mm -hmm. do we do a little bit more cab and a little bit more merlot or we just add more cab to it to kind of make it bigger and bolder and we surprisingly enough had like the exact same tasting mm -hmm. notes mm -hmm. we we're like okay if we just add merlot it's a little too light doesn't quite like hold up to being like a bigger yep. red blend the cabernet only was just like it was just kind of big up front There's yeah nothing behind it right? yeah I said it kind of like fell flat on the end. Yeah. And then the second blend. Yeah, the second blend where we added, in essence, another 15 gallons each of both Merlot and Cabernet from those same vineyard sites, but just kind of different lots that we were working with. That was like, oh, this has actually got like everything that it needs. Mm -hmm. Like that extra 30 gallons to like a half a barrel, basically. Um, so I got to play some musical chairs with kegs and things <laughs> to make all that work. Kegs. It's such a pain. That's that's where blending becomes a huge pain is when you're like, okay, I need like 10 gallons from this barrel and you have to like figure out a way to make that work because you can't just leave that barrel without 10 gallons of wine because that doesn't. So that's my next challenge in the end of next week is to start actually bringing these all to the tank, finalize the blends and make sure that all the remainders, if there are any, are stable and like ready to go. So Cool. Yeah. Super excited. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for trusting me <laughs> with my facial expressions. I know. It was super scary. It was like, I, you started like walking out of the cave <laughs> for like fresh air. And I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. It was too much pressure of you <laughs> looking at me while I was facing it. To be fair, that's why I normally just bring home like sample bottle. I'm like, hey, try these. Let me know what you think. Yeah. As opposed to like doing it. Well, thank right. you for involving me. You're welcome. For sure. And as always, thanks for checking these out. Super excited to get this bottling run done. Keep an eye out for the release notices at the end of the month for our new round of Riesling. Our 2017 Pinot Noir will get released at the end of the month as well. And our red blend, of course. The Repichage. Coming at you. Bye.